A lot of you have been asking for this and it looks as if YouTube have finally abated. If you have over a thousand subscribers, you've probably been seeing this notification. You now have access to the community tab. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Over the past year, if you've been sifting through the subscription feed on your mobile YouTube application, you may have been wondering where are these voting polls coming from? Why can I see a picture or why is this channel advertising another channel? These are all community posts that have been available to some creators over 10,000 subscribers for a while. It's been available to some selected channels under 10,000 subscribers, but now it seems to be rolled out to all channels above 1,000 subscribers. So that's the first question. Do you have the community tab feature available? Do let us know in the comments below. Hello everybody, welcome to vidIQ. My name is Rob. If this is your first time in these glorious YouTube surroundings, we are the tool and channel that aims to help you get more views in less time by educating you on your YouTube journey. Our Chrome extension tool will help you analyze YouTube research videos, audit your own channel and take actionable steps. It is free to download, a link is in the description. The community tab then, I did an everything you need to know video about this a year ago when we first got our hands on it. So if you wanna know the ins and outs of what it is and how to use it, check that video out. Here though are some do's and don'ts. General super obvious advice first, if you've either just got the community tab or you've had it for months, use it. You will be amazed at the results. We often find that when we post in the community tab, we get as much engagement and feedback as we do from videos that we spend hours making. Voting polls in particular are so easy to make and you get so much feedback from them. In our case, thousands of votes and dozens of responses. If you want to canvas a percentage of your audience in five minutes, then asking them a question, putting a voting poll in the community tab is the fastest way to do it. And then maybe you could use the results from a community tab post for a video, just like we did with our channel trailer video, which you can watch over here. For video creators, there's a really exciting aspect of community posts, but for YouTube users, this is terrifying because what YouTube will do is occasionally send these community posts to people who aren't even subscribed to the channel. Now I was stunned when I saw this in the YouTube help article, so I thought what better way to find out if this is true by posting a community tab poll about it. And guess what the results were? More than 40% of the 1,500 people who answered either weren't subscribed to vidIQ or had no idea who we were. Now that probably wasn't a super accurate result, but you have to imagine that some of those people who responded genuinely don't subscribe to vidIQ. So imagine being able to reach people who haven't officially invested in your content through clicking on the subscription button. There is something to bear in mind before you jump into the YouTube community tab, however. It's not like your traditional social media timeline like Twitter and Facebook. Facebook. People are on YouTube to watch videos, so if they don't want to know how many cups of coffee you had in the morning, when you took the dog out for a walk, one community post a day is recommended. And the simple reason is, as we mentioned earlier, this gets into people's subscription feeds. So if all they're seeing is posts from you and no actual video content, they're either going to remove posts from their subscription feed or worse yet, unsubscribe from your channel. Back to things you should be doing with the community tab, the first one being Yes, what you're seeing here is a GIF or a GIF, whatever you want to call it, YouTube community posts support these. I'm surprised that the feeds are littered with GIFs, but presumably not enough people know that you can use them in the community posts. Regardless, now you know you can use this to tease a bit of the footage from your video content. This strategy is generally known as breadcrumbing and Cute Girls Hairstyles with its 5.5 million subscribers does this to perfection. They create voting polls on topics based on videos that are upcoming and they advertise them in the poll itself. Once they've created awareness through this voting poll and then the video goes live, they'll post again reminding people of the video just in case it's not hit people's subscription feeds. Judging from the engagement they get from these posts, Cute Girls Hairstyles is a template for how to use a community tab. Now before you leap into the community tab and have some fun with it, now might be a good time to remind yourself of YouTube's community guidelines. The last thing you want to do is lose this tool the moment you get it, so make sure you don't post any sexual, harmful, hateful, violent content, no harassment, spam, threats, copyrights, yeah, just use your common sense. I like to think of the community tab as YouTube's megaphone. It has the power to not only reach your audience, but those beyond with a powerful message. 
Just make sure you use it responsibly. If you're an experienced hand with a community tab or you're brand new to it, let us know in the comments below your experiences, stories, and tips. Cool Infinity and beyond.